Hey guys, Brian here with Better Chess Training, and I have another training game for you where I play a game and I describe my thoughts and what I calculate during the game. Uh, this one I'm playing uh, white, I play 1e4 against the Philidor defense, which is 1e4, e5, knight f3, and d6. Uh, so I'll let you check out the game. I talk a little more about it during the game. Enjoy. Hey guys, Brian here from Better Chess Training, and I am playing a, another training game here on LeeChess.com. Uh, because of my uh, time restraints with uh, things I'm doing today, I'm playing a 15-minute with a 15-minute increment. And here we are entering into a Philidor defense. So um, I haven't really played against this in a while. Here, Knight to D7 looks kind of odd. I think taking here on e5 would be a mistake. He takes back with the knight, then um, it's helping him to develop. So I'm just going to play uh, bishop to c4 and look to castle here. Okay. And, you know, uh, this opening came up uh, in another, um, in a recent chess book, something like avoiding opening. Avoiding, sidestepping opening theory, I think it's called. So maybe that's the book that he's looking at here. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to just be careful here. I'm not sure what the theory is at this point. H6, let's see. I do want to develop my knight, but I'm not sure if I want to develop the C3 because uh, these squares are already... Um, already covered, controlled by by black, uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, something like this, and maybe over here. So, I think I can play this right now, and then my idea maybe will be sort of like in the uh, Roy Lopez, bring it over to G3. Okay. So he's attacking, he's got one attacker on e4. I can't really get another attacker on there. Uh, I am going to uh, play h3 to prevent this knight from uh, attacking my, my bishop. Okay, he's dropping the knight back. I'm wondering, uh, is he planning on trying to get a little space here by bringing his bishop out to g5? Um, we'll see. Not sure if that's the case. Okay, I'm going to shift my queen here to e2 and think about bringing my rook here. And then maneuvering my knight. I have to see what his plan is. He could be thinking about f5, um, maybe after castling. And I do have to be careful because of f or if he does that. So I would want to think about taking, probably needs to prepare it a little bit because right now it's hanging. But uh, we'll wait and see. Okay, so he's castling. I do think he's going to play that next, actually. So how can I prepare for that? Thinking, um, oh, he can't do it yet anyway because it's pinned. Can I take advantage of that fact? I think so yet. So let's play this rook here, and now I'm threatening to open open up this file, which would be to do my advantage, I think. Depends. If I take here and then he takes back with the knight, then uh I can play something like this and then threaten to take again. Probably force an exchange. Okay, he's getting his queen off of the off of the file as well. Um, so uh, always thinking about this capture. Actually, this capture is advantageous for me. I don't want to worry about that right now. But uh, I'm thinking is. Maybe maneuver this knight here to f5 and get some type of kingside attack brewing. Uh, 
Uh, but always keeping an eye here for some type of advantageous uh, capture. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, nothing really to calculate yet, or at least uh, not that I think. There probably is stuff I'm supposed to, I should think about calculating, but. Oh okay, yeah, it brings us rook to d1. Uh, let's see. I think I should just continue on with my maneuvering here. It does have to be a little bit, I guess, cautious because I do have um, moving this knight, although this queen is covering this pawn here. So this capture here can, can uh, happen. But let's go ahead and take here. Or I'm sorry, uh, move to g3. And now I can think about how I want to proceed from here. Now this is a faster time control, but there's still time to think, so I have to be careful not to uh, over or play too quickly either. Uh, right now I've got about 14 minutes, the opponent has about 15 minutes. Um, I didn't put the clocks on this video, had a little trouble configuring that, but uh, that is, that's okay too. Okay, uh, let's see here. Dropping his bishop back, probably anticipating this knight coming here. Uh, the problem with that is that now this file is not being covered. I'm wondering, thinking here we can drop this knight over here now, targeting here. So let's see what we can do here. Actually, this position could be problematic for him. Okay, so a little bit of a tactical mistake. I think this, this pawn looks like it's hanging because of this pin. So is there any reason I shouldn't take this? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm opening the G file for him, but I'm winning a pawn. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it, threatening this bishop. Okay, blocking. So maybe this is what he was depending on here, but I think... I think I can take with the pawn, and then if he takes with this pawn, then I'm winning this queen. So I don't think this was a very good uh, good play by him. So, so let's see here. Uh, e takes d5, c takes d5, and then queen, uh, bishop takes d5, I think just wins um, a pawn. And if he wants to, so that's one option. Uh, C takes D5, F takes G6, then D5 check, I believe just wins the queen. And then the other option, Knight takes F8, then I have to consider he takes C5, or D takes C4, that is. Then maybe uh, knight takes h7, king takes h7, and then I've got uh, just queen takes c4 for it. I'm sorry, queen getting a little crazy here. Queen takes c4. So that would be a uh, net win of two pawns. So that's pretty good because uh, right now. Um, but this one looks pretty good as well. So e takes d5, f takes is bad. If he just takes here, then maybe I still take here first. And then after he recaptures, actually, I can't, if I take there first, he can take back with the knight, and then this rook would be covering d5. So. See, so best line e takes d5, c takes d5, and bishop takes d5 wins a pawn and still maintains here. And I do have a 
kind of a bailout move with knight takes f8 somewhere in that sequence if for example oh of course i <laughs> accidentally made this move but i think it was the best move anyway it's a little bit of a calculation um luckily that was the move i was thinking of playing sometimes these little arrows <laughs> can can be i have to be careful about that so i've got to use the right click not the left click when it but apparently too i guess if i click on it on one and then click on the other i accidentally left click there so going on with this um c takes d5 is expected And you guys can all see that f takes g6 just loses for for black right away so i think i'm just winning another pawn and this pawn is still pinned and then i think my uh my knight's going to get out here okay it takes here i have to take back so that this pawn remains pinned okay and now it looks like I am uh, two pawns up. And let's say he moves this knight to attack this bishop. I guess that I have like a kind of a bailout move here with knight takes. Okay, so that's what he's doing. And let's just see if there's anything cool here that I can do before I go ahead and do that. Um, well, I could just uh, drop this bishop back. And maintain that pin and re retain my bishop as well. The other thought here is knight takes f8, and then if it gets recaptured, then I could back out. Um, so that would be another option. Or if knight takes f8, knight takes d5, knight takes h7, and then let's say knight takes e3 queen takes e3 king takes h7 then i think um all the minor pieces will get traded but i'll still be a couple pawns up i believe so bishop to b3 kind of puts the ball back in his court but also covers the c2 square and this bishop is fairly valuable uh this knight is not being threatened that way either but I'm also in that case losing the chance maybe to uh, win this win this pawn here. So it depends if I think that this bishop is of any value versus this one. Uh, in that sequence that I had, I have this knight remaining against that bishop, which I don't necessarily like. So I think I'm going to back my bishop up here. And so it remains on the file, and then I could bring my knight back or capture this bishop, which might be a good idea now. Okay, so we got some neat tactics here based on this pin. And maybe he was depending on this d5 to kind of uh, block things. But as we can see, uh, that didn't quite work. So if we look at things, I'm uh, two pawns up, and uh, I think I, I like my position. And here again, if he now if he plays something like knight to d5 again to block this, then I could just take on. F. So I think my my position's free of any real danger. Uh, this bishop on b3 is nice too because it's covering the c2 to. Uh, it's covering c2 here and now i'm actually threatening knight takes e5 instead with a double attack or, or two pieces attacking f7 so i'm liking this position but we have to be careful i've got about 10 minutes left on my clock my opponent has 13 minutes left on his clock but i i'm i'm fairly comfortable so let's see what he does here This h3 move is kind of nice here because uh, he can't get anything over to that square. And what happened in this opening is is uh, my opponent, as we saw earlier in the game, 
seems to uh, it got really behind in development. And you know, development is really important, especially in these EPON EPON openings that tend to be more open. Uh, it's one of the reasons I, I switched over. Sorry, I've got a little glare here. Let's see if I can shift my computer over. It's a sunny day here, uh, but uh, one of the reasons I switched over to E4 to to start practicing is I wanted to develop a little more of my skill in open positions, which would mean a little more practice of the um, initiative, you know, developing the initiative as well as uh, tactics in general. And now, of course, that's a very broad generalization. You never say that there's no tactics in uh, the other types of positions. But, um, you know, it is something that that uh, can be developed quite well. And, and it's something where, you know, you can use the opening and that's what I'm doing. Use the opening to uh, practice uh, aspects of your chess. So, I mean, very broadly, you know, uh, if you want to practice strategic ideas, you can play more closed openings, like with uh, the Queen's Gambit. And if you want to play more uh, more tactics, you can do more of the open games, like e4, e5, or against a Sicilian or whatnot. So, and of course, again, broad generalization. Anyways, back to this game. My opponent's taking a little while to think about it because I'm actually not seeing where he's going to get any counterplay, which is always a great type of position here when your opponent, you know, you can um, stifle your opponent's counterplay. Uh, something like bishop to e6. Again, I think I could just take it. Bishop takes e6. And actually that would be quite uncomfortable as well because now he's uh, increasing his pawn weaknesses and increasing the vulnerabilities around his uh, opponent's king. So, definitely not that great of a an idea either. Okay. So here he plays, he takes d4, which, uh, you know, that can make sense. And of course, I am fine with playing, um, Bishop takes d4, and then the idea here. Maybe he can attack my queen, but again, I could just move my queen out of the way as well. So, I think, do I want to do rook takes e4? Bishop takes e4, and I don't see... I think that's fine. Um, I don't really see any types of attack that can threaten me. I'm just going to do bishop takes e4. I think rook takes e4 is fine as well. Okay, brings this bishop over here. And uh, now I think I can still continue. Am I getting too greedy if I if I say if I go with knight to e5, threatening f7? I mean this pawn is still pinned. The other idea here is I can drop this bishop back. That way there's um, maybe some less less threats here. There's something more I need to be looking at here. Um, it's actually very interesting. I'm actually looking at these. Uh, Possible back rank threats now for possible back rank threats for um, for me as well. For example, Bishop takes f six, and then if Bishop takes f six, Rook takes d eight check. Of course, you could just stop it with the queen. So. The back rank is looks like it's still pretty solid. Looking maybe to discover an attack here. Got this check, but I don't know if it really does anything useful for me. Uh, except that maybe I could do something like this. Oh, and I can't because of this bishop. So, let's see. Knight to e5. Let's see. Is there any way that he can stop knight to e5? 
five. Play something like this. And the problem with that here is that bishop takes d5 is dangerous because of uh, this back rank. So anything here is not, not so great. Uh, I could play just something like c3, a little more defensive, uh, but I can't see how he can really defend or... He can defend here with something like knight to g5, and then even there, a little clearer here, got something like h4, making this very dangerous. Well, well, I can't see a way that he can defend against this at, without me being okay. So here, now, can we put more pressure on him. That is the question. Now, the other idea here is that I could just drop back. There's no reason to. Uh, the H4 might lead to something like knight to e6. Then this kind, does this move kind of uh, this move is kind of a, this g4 square is kind of important. So maybe. Maybe we won't do too much with that yet. Okay, I gotta think a little quickly here. I can't spend too much time. How about this, F4? F4 leaves this diagonal a little weak. Have to be careful also. Kind of discovers there. So, or I'm sorry, it kind of uh, weakens this area as well. So I might need to bail out here and just back off, not really pursue. Um, you know, pursue these ideas here quite yet. Or I can keep the tension up and play something like C3. C3, and that protects here. There's nothing else that can attack it other than, and then it, something like knight to E6 here. So instead of c3, maybe just backing up a little bit. You know what? Let's do that. So I keep these pawns intact, open up here. I don't mind some exchanges now that I'm up ahead in material. One of my ideas here is that my pieces are well developed, so trading them for these well less developed pieces like this bishop. Here is not something that I want to uh, do you know, do too much. Okay, bishop takes bishop to e six. Um, here, let's. Uh, he's going to trade here. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and trade. Try to take back with the knight, and that's okay. And. Here, are there any threats? I don't really see any. Let's go ahead and. Yeah, I have a little threat here. I'm gonna just uh, try to win material here, maybe. He takes back, I take back, and now this is pinned. With uh, some of these ideas coming up. So, still playing with the initiative. Um, play, I have to play a little bit quicker. Of course, if he uh, backs, you know, if he retreats this knight, that's not really a great, not really a great thing. So we are up two pawns, but uh, you know, there's still a lot of pieces on the board, so we need to be careful. And I've lost many a game where I was winning, so. <laughs> Definitely need to be careful here. Uh, let's see, if you got this type of threat, I could just do that. Maybe hit this first with a check. Oh no, I, I can't do that because this takes back and I'm still threatened. Oh, actually, I could do that. So 
This is an example. If he plays this, I can do this with check. If he takes back with the bishop, then I go queen to g4 check. And then probably needs to come back with this knight, and then I win this bishop. So that would not be a good exchange. So I'm expecting him to take here. I take back with the queen. And then what? Any exchanges here are fine. One of the things I've been trying to do while I'm while I'm waiting here is uh, I am trying to play a little bit more. So I'm showing you some of the games. I am trying to play uh, somewhat, you know, kind of medium, you know, thirty minute games, games like this, uh, almost every day, because uh, I think I've told you I don't have a lot of time to play in a weekend tournament. So I'm trying to get more of these games in. Okay, well, we keep looking here, see if there's any, any threats we need to be worried about. Um, by the way, this uh, knight to f4 is protected by this queen, so uh, hitting it with this check here would not be winning this, this knight. However, it still would be uh, pretty, pretty effective in terms of uh, tempo because... Um, this bishop in that one sequence we just talked about, which would be uh, knight to f4, uh, knight takes f6 check, bishop takes f6, and then queen to g4 check, and still win that bishop. So, uh, But let's uh, stop thinking about that sequence, I think. He's trying to decide what to do with this knight. I think taking it uh, is a good idea. If he does something like knight to h7, then uh, trading bishops, I think, is good. Uh, bishop takes g7, then king takes g7, and then I could even still do something like queen to g4 check, and then maybe uh, after that bring the knight, the other knight in to say f, you know, f5 or h5, depending on what what uh, black does. Okay, he takes, and I think I just take back with the queen. Let me just double check here, make sure there's no... I mean, I take back with the queen, and then this, this uh, bishop is pinned, so I think that's great. Now I can think about either knight to f5 or knight to f4. It just depends on what, what the opponent does. So I'm playing this on Lee Chess. As you know, I've played uh, games before on chess.com as well as the Internet Chess Club. And uh, I do enjoy playing on those sites as well. But what uh, uh, Lee Chess is a very enjoyable place to play too because uh, uh, it's fairly easy. There's a lot of players who play here now and there, there's a lot of... Uh, So it's very easy to get a game, I guess, is my point. Just trying to see here. Bishop takes g7 check is kind of what I'm thinking. Because I don't want him to him to, to take here. So I think we can just do this without thinking too much. Bishop takes g7 check. It takes g7. And here do I want to continue these trades? I am, like I said, I am. Well. Now this pawn is threatened. I could play, just take a moment to play something like c3. And I think uh, see too much counterplay from my opponent. But, uh, or I can t continue with um, trying to make threats against his weaknesses as well, like uh, here and here. So what would be the best way to do that? This square would be nice to get to, but I can't do it right now. Um, I 
feel like c3 kind of is a slow move something like knight to h5 might be useful threatening mate of course and or knight to f f5 and then if he captures So making threats here. So this is kind of trying to play for the initiative. Knight to f5, hitting here, and hitting here, oh, hitting over here. Um, and then if he exchanges, my queen is in a very active spot. And I am two pawns up, so kind of like it. Let's let's go for that. Can't see a way that my opponent can uh so he can he can block the mate pretty easily, but the idea is that I can maybe I'll win a pawn if he doesn't trade. So it's something that I've had trouble with, but I think I'm rectifying is kind of being able to finish these games where I have an advantage. So that's kind of the idea about what we're trying to do here. The nice thing here about this trade is that after this, this queen protects c2. So that was kind of an easier way to calculate as well, because if I play c3, then what if he plays queen to b6, now attacking b3? So just trying to simplify simplify that a little bit. Which, of course, can be defended, but, uh, but you know, we need to kind of be a little more precise. Okay. Queen. Huh. This is what what is the idea here? I think this is the idea, right? Well, it's fairly easily deflected, so I think I can just win a pawn here. So if I take plays rook to g eight, why don't I just play g three? Or, or uh, like queen, queen here, look here. All right, let's just take it. Let's not get mated here, right? Okay. Okay, well, now that I'm here, let me deal with this. I could just play g3, or I can try to trade here. If I do that, then if he takes on c2, then actually my thought here would be something like maybe first this check to cover b2. Then we can play this move here. That would be pretty devastating. All right, let's block him. Again, if he takes on c2, okay, here he's directly uh, threatening. And right now there's no mate uh, threatened I have a free hand I guess but I got I do have to be careful I have to be careful all right let's hit him with this check so this is going to cause him to to do something to defend Okay, so he's still threatening mate. So my thought is, uh, before I do anything else, I can go ahead and just defend against the mate. Okay, because this guy's going to be pinned for a little while, and I can bring this rook up. So this pawn, I don't care about this pawn on c2. Okay. 
what is the idea here? If I go here, um, threatening here, and black wants to somehow, I don't mind any trades here actually. Go ahead and attack. Well, it's thought if he had time, he would do queen c2 and any threat in here. But the problem there is that he doesn't have time. So once I trade some of these pieces off, the game will be a lot easier. Actually, I'm kind of enjoying this game. I don't uh, think I've played okay. We'll take a look at it afterwards. and. C. It's always good to analyze your games. That's that's another reason that I'm playing a little more is that the analyzing of the games is very valuable. Maybe uh, kind of per per unit time than maybe studying other stuff. Well, as long as they're pretty good quality games, me well, not too much blitz. Although I have been analyzing my blitz as well in terms of uh, openings and, and tactics. Uh, so you can learn from any of your games, but it just depends on what you're trying to trying to do. So basically, I, I, I'm just going to trade off pieces here. It should be pretty uh, pretty effective. At the very least, I'm going to be trading off this queen and rook, and then the resulting rook with the pawns being three pawns up now should be an easy victory. Okay, um, well, the problem here, I'm just going to go ahead and trade, because uh, this rook is still pinned, so why not? So rook to d1 or rook to e1? So the idea would be here. With rook to e1, but with rook to e1, I can think about threatening a check here, for example. But that might not be as effective, whereas threatening check here would be very, very useful. Let's go rook to d1. Again, I do not care about this pawn. That shouldn't be a problem. In fact, if he, well, if he goes after this pawn, for example, then I just go rook to, rook to d7, he gets one check in, and I move my king, and then, uh, then that should be it. Pins are so nice. Okay. Um. Moving his king out of the pin. That should be fine. Well. But let's go ahead and hit him with this check. Because he's either have to go into another pin. Or. He's either have to put himself in another pin or go to the back rank. And then I can. So. And basically, be able to trade off. Uh, so no relief, no relief for black. Uh, I'm going to either be able to um, trade pieces or get a big, uh, you know, big attack on his king, which will end up in more trading of pieces. Which the more we trade. The sooner we get to me being just three pawns ahead, and which should make the game a little easier. Okay. And this should do it, because he has to block, probably with his rook. And then I can trade. So should I check him first before I trade? Let me look here. Queen to... I don't think it really matters. What if I check him here, and after he blocks, I trade. If he moves, then 
I take and then after it recaptures, uh, I can take this pawn. Okay, okay, so he's blocking, trade, then we trade, we play this one up because it's the uh, past pawn, and now he should resign. <laughs> but he's not. So that's good. Let's let's uh let's learn how to do this. Okay. No reason to uh mess around. Okay, here this is very simple because I have more pawns, I have more tempo moves. And in this case, um we can just trade these pawns right here anyway, so I don't even have to worry about that. Okay, uh, not a problem. What we're going to do here is just take. May not be the most precise way of doing it. And then we just promote this pawn or this pawn, one of these pawns. Okay, so my opponent resigned. And I'm going to say a good game. And let's take a quick look at it. Hey guys, uh, just wanted to show you this here on Lee Chess. Uh, it has this nice feature. I think chess.com may have this as well, where it shows you this graph uh, and it shows you uh, basically the evaluation at each phase of the game. And, and here, and just as we suspected, I have a nice slight advantage in the opening based on my lead in development. And then after that blunder here with knight to h4, um, and coming in after that g6 and being able to win that pawn, uh, eventually leading to a decisive advantage. Uh, obviously with a little bumps along the way where I did not play the most uh, accurate moves, but overall it's saying I did uh, pretty well. So that is a good thing. I'm just looking at a couple of specific positions. Let's just look at the opening real quick. I think it's just an important, this really I think was the, the uh, even though it wasn't decisive, just this, Lack of development here because this knight is stuck here for a little while. Uh, this bishop is pinned in. This knight can't move because this pawn is being threatened, and and I think it just leads to a nice a nice game for for white overall as we saw. Um, let's see here. Later in the game, the big decisive mistake was this g6, and. We saw why, because I was able to, to win this, this pawn here. And um, black compounds that with d5. And the engine is suggesting that that black just take and attack here, after which um, it's giving a sequence, which uh, knight takes f8, and after rook takes f8, that uh, I, I feel like I should just drop this bishop back, but it's saying drop this bishop back, and then uh, play a5, maybe with the idea of, um, I don't know, trying to trap this bishop, but in any case, it's still giving um, white a big advantage. So this is why you kind of have to take some of this engine analysis with, with a grain of salt here. Now it is saying that knight takes knight to e5 is not the best move. It still leads to a white advantage, but it is suggesting that I just go ahead and attack this queen. And after the queen moves, uh, bring my other rook in, which actually does make a little bit of sense. After queen takes e8, saying I could just take here. Here, here, and after the knight takes, then I can pin this knight. So, um, let's see what would have to happen here. And oh, because I guess this bishop is also pinned. So I guess that would be kind of nice. So bishop to e5 would have been a nice tactical shot. Even before all of those tactics. Um, you know, for example, queen to b6, rook takes, queen takes, rook takes. Even if we didn't look any further, we see that this rook is now in the game. This 
Queen is getting pushed around, and uh, we've got you know, a nice, uh, you know, very nice position. Look at all of these white pieces, and then look at all these black pieces that are out of play, okay? or at least uh, sheltered a little bit. Okay, uh, let's see here. Bishop to c3. I just dropped it back again. I already have a big advantage, and I didn't want to introduce complications, but it is saying that h4 would have been a nice move. But it really only gives, I think, a slight advantage. And positionally, I didn't like having this g4 square open. So I think that what I played was, was just fine. I think at this point, pretty much uh, played fairly well. Trying to just see if there was maybe a quicker knockout, and it doesn't look like, let's see here, it does have here queen to e4 check, which was played in the game, but with also an advantage, it's already saying here, go ahead and play the rook to d6, and after queen to f3, um, queen to e6, now threatening here maybe, but uh, I don't think, I don't think it, it's that super doesn't seem super convincing here. What what happens here? Rook to six check. F takes g three. Queen takes g three check, and then problem here, of course, is that this king can now go this way. So there's no trapping of the of the king. Okay. Well, those are just a few of the positions. I think I played a pretty good game overall. Uh, Hope you saw some of the, you know, a lot of tactical themes in terms of the pins, uh, but also just the philosophy of how I took a, a, a advantageous position and pushed it through to uh, convert the victory, which is something that I've been struggling with, so it was nice to get this one under my belt. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that game. Uh, I thought this game was uh, fairly instructive in terms of Things like grabbing the initiative and always being aware of those tactics. And then once you have an advantage, how to convert that into a victory. So uh, if you enjoyed that, hit that like button. I also want to thank my patrons. Thank you for your support. Of course, if you want to consider becoming a patron, you can check out the link down below. Of course, any um, support is appreciated, but of course is not required to enjoy the videos on this channel. So uh, with that, I will see you next time and good luck with your chess.